Um, I'd like to show you guys the long sword, which is our first uh, first design, uh, which is recently come into version three. Um, since it was my first design, I did a lot of things wrong. Um, you know, it still worked, but it kind of had you know. There's always this like drive to improve, and so uh, you know, just by sort of incremental tweaking and refining of the circuit, we're at the point where we, where we are now. Um, so the long sword was inspired by me playing uh, like hard clipping overdrives, like a DoD 250 or MXR Distortion Plus into an Ampeg V4. So it's got a similar tone stack to those old Ampegs, where you have a pair of shelving filters for bass and treble, and then an active mid control. So if you put those together, you can do quite a bit with it. So uh, without further ado, uh, Zach's just going to turn some knobs while I play different things. And uh, first, here's the clean tone. Oh, that's not a clean tone. Um, quite a bit going on in there. Um, in addition to the, the EQ, which can really let you dial in a whole bunch of either really like tight tones or really kind of bitey stuff or, or sludgy things or anything in between, uh, we have a control to select clipping diodes, um, which, uh, you know, in, in a lot of puzzles, it's like, okay, well, you've got your LED mode, which is kind of, you know, uh, louder, and your silicon mode, which is quieter, and the node diodes, which is uncompressed. People have been doing this since like the, the full tone full drive too. It's not an old idea, but uh, I spent a really long time auditioning different kinds of diodes, uh, trying using uh, transistors as diodes and MOSFETs as diodes, um, and amassing a ridiculous horde of weird diodes from the MIT flea market. Um, and so in doing so, we just have a nice sort of array of different tones that you can coax out of this thing. And uh, you know, two of the modes are kind of default settings, then one of them is just like a chef's choice, like whatever weird thing we're vibing on. Um, so every long sword's a little bit different in that regard. Um, but you can pretty much guarantee uh, you know, a very wide palette of tones. So if we just go through the diode selector really quick, um, all the way to the right, um, this is kind of a, like a high headroom. This one is standard to all the models. Um, that one's got a lot of headroom. Can you show the transition into clipping on this one? Um, so like, Gain it like probably 11 o'clock. So that one is, you know, like a very gradual transition into heavy overdrive. Um, and then the all the way to the left, the middle position is no diet, so it's kind of a clean boost that goes into like an edgy breakup. Um, with this setting, it's like a very uh, you know, these are all like new old stock germanium diodes and weird old uh, you know, silicon power diodes and things like that. Um, and this one's got a much smoother sound, so. It still gets heavy, but it doesn't have that like, you know, like raging character of the other clipping mode. So if you want something low gain, you've got it. If you want something high gain, it's there. This is just like your Swiss Army knife uh, distortion box. Um, so the next thing I'm going to go into is the model FET. Um, this was my next design uh, that sort of uh, you know kind of took on a life of its own after the after the long sword. Um, and this was inspired by the fact that I can't afford a Sun Model T. Um, mm -hmm. It's a really great amp. Um, basically, Sun was doing a lot of at first they were doing. Uh, guitar amps built around Dynaco hi-fi kits, so they are very clean sounding tube amps. And then they had the idea in the mid-70s to take a Marshall preamp and combine it with this ultra-linear power amp. So it's just this, it sounds kind of like a Marshall, but it's got way more, uh, you know, bandwidth, and it's just super, super loud and has a ton of headroom. So how do you put that into a distortion box? Um, frankly, you just go through a million iterations until it sounds right. Uh, you know, there's a lot of weird magic in here that I don't fully understand, but the key to it, I think, uh, is essentially simulating the power amp stage and not just the preamp. So you have a preamp of cascaded transistor stages that sound like tube stages, but then you also simulate 
the phase inverter, the power transformer, and all this like power and, and like raw energy that this that this amp has. Um, so the cool thing about the model FET is that it works like a distortion box, but you can also run other things into it to give it a little bit more punch, a little bit more, uh, you know, and it can kind of, you know, model TFI whatever dirt or fuzz is going into it. So here's the model FET. Can you say it kind of cleans that? Yeah. It sounds clean. The EQ is an FMV, uh, Fender Marshall box design. Uh, you find it in Fender's Marshalls and boxes. It's very common. It's not a true three-band EQ in that the bands are all very interactive with one another, but it's familiar. And it's got a nice uh, bump in the lows, bump in the highs, slight mid-scoop that just uh, sounds right with guitar. It's a sound that we all associate with electric guitar. Um, so now if you take this sort of clean tone, you can actually run another distortion into it. Um, so we'll just add a little bit of uh, long sort. Can you set the EQ flat and the gain kind of low, Zach? Um, it's a little bit of long sort going into it, so again, we have a clean tone. So that's kind of just like enhancing what's coming in after it. Just It sounds like you're running into a dirty amp, which is kind of a more realistic uh, you know, performing recording scenario. Um, so that's that's the model FET, um, and then it also does you know overdrive on its own, so it can be kind of a high gain setting. So that's also, you know, it has a lot of gain on its own. And if you take that and run like a big muff into it, it's it's apocalyptic. It's, it does the, you know, the sun, the band thing. Um, so the next pedal I want to talk about is the Dude Incredible. Um, so this one, I'm a really big fan of, of uh, shellac. Um, and C. Albini's guitar tune is just this very idiosyncratic, bizarre, clangy beast. And I, I was doing some research and reading about it. And uh, everyone thinks that the magic of Steve Albini's guitar tone is this buzz called the Harmonic Percolator. Uh, it is undoubtedly a very unique and special pedal, but he only turns it on in the parts of the songs like uh, like in Wing Walker, you know, when his guitar is just beating back like crazy. That's the harmonic percolator. The rest of the time it's just sitting there on stage. Um, and Steve Albini's quote-unquote clean tone is uh, his aluminum neck Travis Beam with single coils that are super microphonic and sound terrible in any other musician's hands, uh, going into this thing called the Inner Sound IVP. And the IVP is a basically this old rack preamplifier that's got a huge EQ and a very uh, odd distortion circuit that uses some transistors and a transformer. Um, I think it was uh, Monty was saying something about uh, pre or post distortion EQ. Um, the IVP is like a, a dissertation in pre-distortion EQ because you have this massive graphic EQ that's going into a distortion circuit. And the beauty of that distortion circuit is that it's pretty, pretty bandwidth limited. Um, and that it rolls off about like two or three K, depending on what transformer you use in that circuit. Like the crappiest small signal audio transformer you can find sounds the best in the circuit because it gets rid of all the harsh stuff. So even though Albini runs it with a treble up all the way, uh, it smooths everything out. So let's see if I don't butcher a shellac riff. That's if you that setting was with the treble all the way up, and then Zach was adding bass. And the cool thing about uh, running a lot of bass into a circuit like this is that it overloads in a really nasty way. Um, most good distortion sounds have a lot of uh, low end cut going into them, like the classic run a tube screamer into uh, like a JCM 800 for thrash metal tones. That's because the tube screamer cuts above 700 hertz, and everyone's like, "Oh, I want my metal tones to be bassy." That's the bass player's job, you know, it works out. Um, and uh, you know, so like having this sort of uh, pre-distortion EQ control lets you, uh, you know, dial in those clangy tones without it just biting into your eardrums. Um, Albini does that because of the guitar, which is super bright, and because all his caps have tweeters in them. Um, so the other half of this is the you know the much uh, vaunted harmonic percolator circuit, which uh, let's first hear it on its own. Uh, it's just really a no nonsense kind of fuzz.
got a nice combination of silicon and germanium transistors. Um, we tried to follow the original, um, you know, the spirit of the original, but those transistors are very hard to.